is 2019 going to be the year for Samsung? Well, by the looks of this phone, it might as well be. This is the M20 by Samsung. It's got a water drop notch design, first by Samsung. Hi guys, this is Silla from Gadget Bridge. Let's go ahead and unbox this device. Let's start with the box. Samsung has never experimented with the box and has kept it simple when it comes to mid to low end devices. The Samsung Galaxy M20's box is simple to look at with its branding pretty clear on the front and on the sides. The rear of the box has a couple of tech specs which do state that this smartphone has a dual rear camera with a 13 megapixel primary sensor and a 5 megapixel secondary sensor. Also, this one has a massive 5000 mAh battery inside and comes with an Exynos 7904 octa-core CPU. So let's get cracking and bring that phone out of its shell. First thing inside the box is a small rectangular cardboard case which has the manuals and user guides inside it. Going past that is where we see the actual smartphone. I'm just going to rip its covers off, start it and bring it back in 2 minutes. Till then, let me take you through the other contents of the box. Next, what you will find in the box is the fast charger. Yes, this phone has a USB Type-C charging port, so the massive battery inside the phone can be fast charged with the travel adapter. With that, users will also get a data come charging cable. This is USB Type-C to the regular USB. Also in the box is the SIM ejector tool. So that is about it. Those are the contents you get inside the box of Samsung Galaxy M20. Let me quickly bring back the smartphone and take you through its features and overall design. Since we are on the topic, let's talk about its design first. The Samsung Galaxy M20 is not the usual lightweight boxer. Instead, it is a heavyweight thanks to the mammoth 5000 mAh battery inside. The front of the smartphone is dominated by a large 6.3 inch FHD Plus Infinity V display. This is the first smartphone by Samsung that comes with a water drop notch design which has the front facing camera on it and the ear speaker is right above it on the top edge. Since it is Samsung's first water drop design innovation under the Made for India initiative, we have to say we are a bit impressed. Samsung has kept such a small chin area when we compare it to others in the market like Xiaomi or Oppo. Some of their phones in the price bracket still have a large chin band, but not this one. Moving on, the screen is protected by a toughened glass, which is a bit raised and comes a few millimeters out of its casing. Nevertheless, this smartphone is comfortable to hold. The case is derived from a single mold of plastic and there are no sharp or jagged edges on this smartphone. The right side of the mobile has the volume rocker key with the power button right under it. The left side has the SIM tray. Talking about which, this one can place two nano SIM cards inside as well as a micro SD card of up to 512 gigs. At the bottom, Samsung has placed a mono loudspeaker, USB Type-C charging port and a 3.5mm audio jack. On the top, you get the secondary pinhole microphone. Flip the device around and you will see the dual vertically stacked cameras. These come with a LED flash which is placed right under it. Next to it is the larger than usual fingerprint scanner with the Samsung branding below it. Also if you look closely at the bottom part of the case, you will find that it reads manufactured in India which is quite cool to recite. So that sums up the form factor. Let's switch gears and talk about the technical specifications of the Samsung Galaxy M20. 
Inside this smartphone is an Exynos 7904 1.8 GHz octa-core CPU. It is available in two variations, 3 GB RAM and 32 GB storage and the one we are testing right now has 4 GB RAM and 64 GB storage. The 13 megapixel primary camera at the back has an aperture size of 1.9 and the secondary 5 megapixel sensor has an aperture size of 2.2. The front 8 MP sensor has an aperture size of 2.0. These are great for photos and we will show you some of the shots the rear one can take in just about a second. Videos can be recorded in full HD but not 4K on both the front and the rear cams. Maybe in the next software update that will be available too. Connecting the dots, the smartphone has Android 8.1 Oreo running on it and not Pi. There might be a software update coming soon. The user interface is very Samsung and at the time of its first boot the device did ask us which apps to additionally install on the device. This is great as you can reduce the bloatware and keep only those apps which you want on it. But you will still find some additional apps lurking around here and there. Thankfully these can be quickly uninstalled. Overall at the moment the operating system is slick. We are not facing any sort of lag during operation and things are loading quite swiftly. A few more days with the device and we will come to know exactly how this device fares. So for the full review you can head over to gadgetbridge.com. Other features of the device include Bluetooth 5.0, Wi-Fi, power saving mode, blue light filter and Dolby Atmos which works with a set of headphones only. Now let me show you a couple of indoor camera shots and you can judge them by yourself. Alright guys, so as always, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, go ahead and press that subscribe button followed by the bell icon. If you did like this video, do leave us a comment as well. Give us that thumbs up, we always appreciate that. Also, come over to our Twitter and Instagram pages. We always run a giveaway here and there. This is Sulab signing off for Gash Bridge. I'll see you next time.